Hello, I'm David McRae and I'm a health promotion professional and I also work as a patient advocate. On the subject of fluoride testing, there seems to be almost no testing available at pathology labs or hospitals for a doctor who suspects that a patient suffers fluoride related illness or for a sufferer who wants their experience with fluoride tested and confirmed. I think the problem is many fold. Doctors don't request fluoride testing because it's missing from their education and their ongoing professional development. Laboratories don't do it because they don't currently have an easy to interpret testing protocol. But above all, in my experience, state health departments and national bodies like the National Health and Medical Research Council don't want any clinical testing for fluoride developed. What sort of testing is it that we need, David? We need testing for those many patients who suffer painful symptoms they have discovered they can get free from if they rigorously avoid all fluoridated tap water and other fluoride products for a period of time, for days or in some cases weeks. In 1991, the NH and MRC report on water fluoridation stated that there were many such people. It said, and I quote, these claims are being made with sufficient frequency to justify well-designed studies which can properly control for subject and observer bias. End of quote. It would shock any Australian taxpayer to know that despite this call from the NHMRC in 91, to this day in 2013, no such testing procedure or program has been implemented in Australia. The type of testing being called for is properly controlled challenge testing. That's double blind challenge testing in a controlled environment. For most sufferers, it would take a full day to carry this out or even more in some cases. And the typical fluoride sensitivity reactions that we are talking about that are uh, reported in medical literature to occur, these include stomach and intestinal pains, joint pains and headaches, extreme fatigue that's not even relieved by sleep, skin rashes and several other symptoms as well. Now, in the United States, the National Research Council produced a report in 2006 on fluoride in drinking water and this report again highlighted exactly this need to do testing across the nation for hypersensitivity reactions to fluoride. But then we come to 2007 in Australia, our NHMRC produced another report on fluoridation and this one entirely glossed over this whole issue not even any explanation for why there has never been any follow-up on their own 1991 recommendation for clinical testing to be developed. In addition to that type of clinical testing, you would think that doctors should be able to send patients for blood or urine testing for fluoride. Well, in fact, workers in our fluoride polluting industries like smelting and oil refining, they can get urine testing but no research centre in Australia has been funded to do the necessary work to develop protocols to make blood and urine testing for fluoride applicable to the general population. That is, to develop suitable and applicable testing relevant for the level and the types of fluoride exposure, exposure that occur in the general population. Now, I understand this is a complex biochemical area, but that is no excuse for the failure to tackle it. We, we know that there can be multiple explanations for a high fluoride reading in a blood or a urine sample, but for goodness sake, we've been exposing many Australians to constant fluoride through their drinking water for 40 or 50 years now. It is vital that the work be funded and proper monitoring be put in place monitoring both on a population-wide basis and clinical testing for affected individuals. And it's my opinion that it is a scientific disgrace and a public health disgrace 
that state and federal health departments are neglecting or even blocking this fluoride testing from happening. What would be the implications if the NHMRC of 1991 report recommendation was followed and the symptoms of susceptible people were shown to be reproducibly developed in well-designed scientific studies by the government's own health agencies? Well, the, the ramifications would be that uh, this would get uh, a great deal of reporting in the scientific press and in the, in the public media and would become quite a scandal uh, to know that the governments had had this information from the NHMRC and had not ensured that proper testing was carried out right from 1991. Uh, when you think about it, it's now nearly, uh, uh, or in fact over 20 years later, the same people and a whole cohort of new people are still suffering these symptoms and no testing to confirm their complaints has been done in this country. Would there be any legal ramifications if it was shown that fluoridation is harming people without any doubt? Look, I think there should be legal ramifications. Um, there have been enormous legal ramifications for all the comparable toxic uh, poisoning events uh, around the world, uh, like asbestos, when asbestos poisoning continued on despite governments and health authorities knowing that it was happening and without doing anything about it. Uh, lead in petrol, there were legal ramifications for those who allowed it to continue for far too long. So I, I think there's a very uh, good chance there would be legal ramifications for those responsible for overlooking, neglecting and ignoring the evidence of harm from water fluoridation. Would this lead to the scrapping of the fluoridation program? Oh, absolutely. And it's my considered opinion that it certainly should. It did across Europe, any of those countries in Europe that flirted with fluoridation for a few years, like Sweden, Finland, Netherlands, they all scrapped it long ago. So it certainly should be scrapped here. Is it in the fluoridation promoter's interest not to conduct scientific tests of the population? Yes, it does seem to be. Um, I think it's a bit like a, a dam wall that's about to break but those who have hung their entire careers on supporting and promoting fluoridation, I think are quite terrified that once the proper testing of affected individuals starts happening, that their careers will come crashing down around their ears. I believe that it's not easy to sue the government for harm. What are your thoughts on this, David? I'm not a lawyer, and I know that some of the state fluoridation acts have written into them um, that no one can take any action against uh, the people doing fluoridation, uh, which was very clever to write those clauses into the acts. But as far as I can see, the acts cover water authorities who are acting at the direction of government, but they don't really uh, cover the government and they don't necessarily cover government agencies such as uh, health departments who've, who've authorised fluoridation. And, in, and there are higher laws, uh, I think, which can overcome uh, petty little clauses that try to protect, uh, protect uh, the wrongdoers in, in the case of fluoridation. Why would the government put laws in place to protect themselves if fluoridation is safe and effective? Yes, it's a good question, isn't it? Um, it seems pretty obvious that uh, when they were framing the, the laws that allow fluoridation, that they were well aware there could be claims for damages and, and therefore they were well aware that fluoride was a harmful and, and toxic substance. And they must have been well aware because it's been known uh, very well in the in scientific world for hundreds of years and certainly since the 1930s, uh, well written up in medical literature. So. I guess they were aware there were problems and uh, I can't read their minds uh, for, as for why they still went ahead knowing that some people would be harmed. Obviously, those governments that included those clauses to protect themselves were very well aware that 
fluoride was a toxic substance and well aware that fluoridation could harm people. What would you say to medical authorities in Australia that have not actually considered the testing situation? Uh, would you encourage them to promote testing as a, as a given? Yes, I would. I, I think it's terribly hard for a GP who comes across a patient who who knows that they're being harmed by fluid added water and who's worked it out for themselves by going on and off of the water. Uh, they look around and they can't find any easily available testing to do. And if they talk to a, their medical association, they'll get told, don't look any further into this. So uh, it's awfully hard on the individual concerned doctor. And we need government health departments and the NHMRC to educate doctors on it and to get the testing sorted out and available for everybody. How hard is it for an individual to get tested in this country? It, it seems to be very hard because the, uh, uh, even if you go to the trouble of getting urine and blood tests, um, they're not easy to interpret unless you do a whole series of them and uh, uh, examine all the other fluoride intakes for that person. So the proper sort of clinical testing for symptoms resulting from fluoridated water uh, is pretty hard to, uh, to get any hospital or any uh, clinic to conduct it. Why do you think it's so difficult for doctors to be trained in spotting fluoridation symptoms? Look, I, I, I think that it's politics. There's, there's a great deal of politics in, in, in medicine. Um, there, there was a time when it was very unpopular for doctors to look at and talk about the harm that tobacco caused. But then we know that that all changed. But uh, the fluoridation of water program is considered to be a public health program. So uh, for um, medical schools to start concentrating on the harm that it causes is just too politically unpopular at the moment. Uh, but we saw that all swing around in, in Europe and in other countries. And it's, it's uh, just a very unfortunate thing that in the United States and Australia and a couple of other countries, it's uh, a political no-no to uh, look at the harm caused by fluoride in the water supply. David, how easy is it to actually stop the fluoridation program? I've heard reports in the news of late that it's $10 million or $50 million or even up to $150 million to stop the fluoridation program. Surely it's as simple as just turning off the tap and not buying the chemical and not putting it in the water. What are your thoughts? Yes, it is that simple. Obviously, you just turn off the valve, stop the flow of fluoride, and then take your time to deconstruct the equipment. But it's only when you have shared water supplies between neighbouring municipalities, if they don't all agree on stopping at the same time, then one council might be forced into uh, installing defluoridation equipment, and that is costly. But they should all stop at the same time. As simple as that, just stop fluoridation. As simple as that, yes, and it's time. In 2013, there's no reason it should be still going on.